Hi friends, it's Michael here. And you know, normally that you know I would come with you to you with a video about current events, politics, history, so on and so forth. But actually, because it's Black History Month, I wanted to do a podcast, something I've always wanted to do anyway. And I found three other people to do a podcast show with me. It's my two cousins, Tara and Juan, and my good friend Sheena. And because it is Black History Month, we decided to talk about <clears throat> black issues and what's facing the black community today and also our own black experiences. Um, Sheen unfortunately was not able to participate in this week's video because of an unforeseen emergency, but she will be missed and we'll see her again next week. And this is this is our conversation. Um, <laughs> um, you just got to my audience, so if you can ask me, just you know, say a couple of nice things about yourself. That'd be great. Can you just start. Who? They know who I am. Um, <laughs> That's her fucking catchphrase. Like, everything's fabulous and life-changing and amazing and wonderful. Um, so, Rita doesn't eat something. I'm like, this is life-changing. She doesn't do that. That's it. I swear to God, she does. I would love it. I would say, oh, it's just like, I like just hand her things. Like, just give her things and see how she feels about it. Like this? I love that spirit. Like, this girl, she came up to me one day. She's like, she, she, had, a, she had some kind of alcohol or whatever. And she's like, Michael, you have to have this. This is life changing. It's fabulous. Oh, it's wow. amazing. And I'm like, I'm like, girl, is it really that serious? And for her, it was. <laughs> and we we went to a liquor store, and she's telling this guy, she's like, it's life changing. It's amazing. You'll love it. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> be you and be great. Be very enthusiastic about whatever that was. Yes. I like that. That's that's Sabrina for you. Like no like no matter what. Like if it's bad, like she, if she if it's bad, she doesn't like it. She passionately dislikes it. So it's just she's wonderful. We're gonna start off with Black Lives Matter. Um, as we know, this has been a movement since about theoretically since 2012. That's when it was really picked up. As we know, there's been situations since going dating back to the 70s, 80s, 90s, 50s, 40s, all that stuff. Where the, we've had to deal with police br brutality. What is your thoughts on the movement? Do you feel like we need to do more? Do you feel like we're, our messaging is mixed up? What do you think about the riots and all that stuff? Lay it out for uh, me. So I don't want to negate the time and effort um, or disrespect the intention of those who are pure hearted in their endeavors and passions and whatever they want to advocate for. These Black Lives Matter. But, uh, you know, just um, just, 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 just historically, like initially, let's just talk about the marching and, you know, the, the, the kind of, uh, assimilating or, you know, assim it's assimilating, right? It is when the people gather in a group, um, assimilating because of some tragedy of a Caucasian officer killing a young black boy. Uh -huh. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like there's any tactical there's any tactical um, strategy for them to really overcome. They, I don't think they've developed and put their research together so they can create a foundation to create institutions, to create uh, practices, to create things to finance that movement to make sure that, you know, the people who are 
being hurt, harmed, which are in an impoverished financial situation, mm-hmm. can, you know, fight it out um, in, um, what is it called? Um, it's an L word. When, when, when lawyers are in court. Litigate. Uh, yeah, you know, develop have the resources to litigate in court. So ultimately we can, you know, have some sense of justice or to educate the people. There's no sense of like, to me, community. In Black Lives Matter. I have a question back going back to that because there actually there have been some Black people out there who have been anti-Black Lives Matter, and they <clears throat> and I'm sure we know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you know they cite Black on Black crime in particular as the reasoning um, as to why they're against it. Shantara, what do you think about that aspect of it? Black on Black crime. Yeah. As far as black- yeah, because like pretty much the, the stimulus is Black Lives Matter, you know, our, our lives are being attacked by white police officers, so on and so forth, and we're not getting our lives respected or treated in a certain way. But some people have argued, mostly white people and a few black people have said, well, what about black on black crime? What would be your response to that? I think, I think that people are just people. I don't think that black people, I, I think that we are seen as being more violent than any other group of people and I don't think that that I it's not fair and I don't think especially black people because we know who we are right well let me not say that some of us we, we, <laughs> okay so I, okay so I have I kind of have an example so I was okay. having a discussion with someone the other day and it and it was, the discussion was based on my views because I feel certain ways about about um about white people and and they they do make me uncomfortable Uh and i do have a certain amount of not fear but i do i do try to make sure that i'm watching my surroundings when i am one of only a few people who look like me in a space because i do i do feel like i feel like there is violence in the black community but i don't i don't think that it's that much worse than in any other community so i don't i just don't see how that is an argument i right. think that that I, especially coming from a black person i just think that it's kind of like a, a how about yeah. Like, yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of like what i said um, last time about the stats you know you look at black on black crime that's what we want to call it again most people are killed by people that they know so not mm-hmm. huh and so 91% of the black people are killed, by, are killed by other black people. But at the same time, what we don't talk about is how 85% of white people are killed by other white people. What we don't talk about is how most patricide, fratricide, child molestation, rape, um, drunk driving, these are predominantly white male crimes. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you know, so when people throw that all lives matter thing out to me in particular, it galls me because it's like, look, it's like the example with the fire. Like the house is on fire. The whole neighborhood's at risk right now. That house is on the fire right now. And like we pointed out last week, I'm like, look, there's what, we're 12, 13 percent of the population and we're 30 percent of the deaths at police hands. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. And I find it, you know, in some respects, a bit reductive when we talk about Black Lives Matter, whatever, but we're going to talk about black straight men's lives that matter. We're not talking about black trans lives because like, like I said last week, plenty of them are being killed. We don't talk about that. We're not right. talking about the black women who get killed. Outside uh, of Breonna Taylor and um, Sandra Gray, we don't really hear about these types of things. Sandra, Sandra Bland, uh, Sandra Bland, excuse me. We don't hear about these types of things. And I'm like, there needs to be a broader discussion when we talk about Black Lives Matter, about being more inclusive of all Black Lives Mattering. I think, I think the, the best example of, of why we say, or a good example of why people say Black Lives Matter, I think that... I don't remember what year it was. But I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a, I want to say she, it was, it was, there was a lady and she was driving erratically outside of the, the White House. This was, this was maybe, I want to say maybe six or seven years ago. She was dra- just driving erratically outside mm-hmm. of the White House. And they shot this lady, they shot her dead in her, in her car. And then you have a group of white people who are, and, and there were some black people. I saw black faces there too. Right. not about to do blame it all on white people but you see you see it's kind of disproportionate there were so many white faces that stormed the capital 
a few weeks ago, and that in comparison to one lowly black woman who, who I think she was mentally ill. I don't know if you guys remember the story. I'm going to try to look it up. Yeah, I remember. I'll probably send it to you. I've, but, I've heard of it, but I don't remember it. Yeah, it was recent. Okay. Yeah, it was a while back, but they killed her. They killed this lady. And that's actually one thing like it I wish people talked about more. Unstable. Like that's one thing I wish they talked about. Like, we talked about before, Chantera, I think last week, <clears throat> about people with mental illness not being taken seriously in these cop in these in these police calls, and them getting killed when they, all they all they need is help, and it's kind of disheartening.